So you go over to the ballpark and um, you didn't spend too much time feeling good that you were there because you were focused on staying and earning your role. I felt wonderful about being there, but I thought it was way overdue, so I was not intimidated. I felt like it was another ball game. Okay. The stadium was bigger, you know, sure. and it made an impact. And to tell you the truth, it wasn't Tiger Stadium. It was just another ball It was park. just Philadelphia because it wasn't Detroit. That's I right. It. it was a big league game. I knew okay. that. It all registered, but there was no intimidation or nothing like that. Uh, I didn't I didn't play right off the bat. I got one, I hit a fly ball right field, my first at bat, and then I caught Jim Cott. Um, he hadn't won a game in six weeks. Really? And I, I caught him, and I think it was like the fifth inning, we're winning, and he was going to leave. You know, I think I looked at him because Danny Ozark was coming out, because I think he walked the first guy or something, that sixth inning maybe. Okay. And, uh, he was going to leave, and no, you're not going to leave. This is your, you've been pitching for a while, but, uh, you know, this is my first big league game. I'm staying. You know, I'm not going to get into too much. But uh, Danny came on. He said, I'm doing great. Danny wound up catching a shutout for him. But also, <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, I got my first big league hit a double off the wall. You know? That game? Yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah. Do you, do you know who it was against, or just? Pete Falcone, great pitcher. Oh, so that shutout. By Jim Cott was against the Mets. Yes, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna. I'm gonna no. We can check it. Yeah, I gotta check it. Yeah, I remember still. catching a shutout for him. My first big league hit was in St. Louis. I thought the game that I caught was in Philadelphia, but it might have been St. Louis. Oh, I'm getting old now. That's okay. a few years ago. Falcone was with the Cardinals. Yes. So it could have very well been the it Cardinals well and Pete Falcone. Yeah, I'm trying to. But the bottom line is, Jim Cott got a shutout. Jim Cott got a shutout. And, and Bill Narodney got a double. Got my first big league hit, and I got the ball. I remember standing on the second base, hey, give me the ball, give me the ball. <laughs> they already had taken it. <laughs> they already took it in. So, as a September call-up, I mean, a lot of September call-ups don't, don't get too many games, too many innings, too many at-bats. No, I got four or five at-bats. I think I got one hit. Oh, so that one hit was your September call-up hit? Yep, and I, had, I think I hit the ball every time. I think I don't think I struck out. So, 76, you get called up. Yep. So... Now, it's the off-season between 76 and 77. Right. This is where, in my world, the legend of Naha grew. <laughs> well, this is, in all honesty, you talk to a bunch of people my age? Yeah. A bunch of people that you never knew existed, right, started to love you, man. Oh. <laughs> so, yeah, was, uh... you're, you're getting ready because it's the off-season, and 1977, uh, you did not end up going back to play for the Phillies in 1977. I did. In the major leagues? No. I know. No. That's what I'm, I'm getting to. Okay. So in 1977, you play, mm -hmm. but you already told me that you felt like you belonged in 76, and you thought it was overdue. I love the confidence. I want a guy like that on my team. So in 77, what was the deal? Uh, did they talk to you? Did yeah, they say? Well, 77, I go to spring training and uh, tore up, did really good. Yeah. And I had a really good 76 year. And, uh, I was called in the office at the end of spring training after tearing it up, and Paul Owens and Danny Ozark were sitting there, and they said they were going to send you down. Uh, well, they had McCarver, uh, Oates, Boom. Boone. You know, they were loaded, and I thought, okay. But I heard rumors that they were going to trade me for two left-hand pitchers, but the Phillies wouldn't do it because I'd be in the same league. Sure. So, uh, you know, kind stuff of makes sense until something occurs. Yeah. So it it started to cook on me a little bit. You know, I'm thinking. You know, they have no intention to let me get to the big leagues. So anyway, I went to, went home that day and I said, shave my head. No, shave my head. So they shaved my head and I went to spring training. But yeah, who did shave your head, by uh, the way? My wife. Your wife yeah, shaved your head? Yeah, I shaved my head <laughs> with a few objections, you know. But shaved my head. I went to spring training the next day in AAA. And all of a sudden, all these press people are there. Of course. I didn't have to brag or say nothing. They says, uh, you know, why'd you shave your head? And I says, well, look at my stats, you tell me. And that's all I said. And boy, it popped from there. There was newspaper articles everywhere, and big picture, and not on the cover of this thing, and all this, and oh my goodness. You know, so it took off, and I had a real good year in 76. And uh, I'm, I'll go ahead and tell you the whole story. Sure. 76, 77's over with. Uh, I 
pitch you, And you didn't play a day in the major leagues in 77? No, no, they didn't be called me. Oh. Well, wait, no, not now to Phillips. Okay. So, uh, anyway, I didn't get a chance to hit and play for a long time. And all of a sudden I started, they put me in once in a while, I keep hitting home runs. I wanted 23 home runs after not playing for a long time. So then they put me at first base, 405 put outs without an error. In AAA? AAA. Okay. So they, you know, I got lucky. I played really well. Nobody could hold me back or nothing. Okay. The season ended. Uh, I get a call from, well, Jim Bunning was my agent. And I get a call from uh, um, Paul Owens. Mm -hmm. And he says, Bill, we'll offer you 188000 to sign, and then we'll talk about contract. And I said, Mr. Owens, that doesn't work that way, because uh, he told me I was going to get called up. And the first day I was supposed to, you know, I, I, I'm i going on a honeymoon for one day because i got to leave for up north. And on the way, way to uh, Disney World, believe me, that's all we could do at the time. And uh, um, I hear 10 Blackwell broke his, I mean, uh, Johnny Oates broke his shoulder in the tag sure. play. I figured, well, I'm going to big leagues. So he stayed for a while, turned around, came back. And on the way back, I hear they buy Tim Blackwell from Boston. Baseball. So it's killing me. Uh, that's what set this all off. You know, so I'm thinking, no, no, this ain't going to work. So anyway, it's over with. Uh, Paul Owens calls me up, 188000 to sign now. We'll talk contract. The money's good, Mr. Owens. I thank you for the opportunity. I can't do this stuff like this anymore. Not like that. And uh, he says, well, if you change your mind, you've got 10 minutes. You know. Really? Uh, 10 minutes later, I get a call from Jim Bunning. You know. I was asking for pretty good money, you know, three-year contract, guaranteed. Sure. And he says, do you want to still want that contract? And I says, yeah. He said, well, I got that for, for you with two, uh, three $10,000 bonuses on each year. And he said, you want it with the White Sox, you got to port there tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow? Yeah. So uh, yeah, I said, heck yeah. So, man, I jumped on a plane, went to the White Sox. Where was Spring Street? Sarasota? I was right there, big leagues. I'm playing now from... Triple A to being bummed out to depressed to thinking do I want to do this anymore, to uh, Chicago White Sox and big leagues with Francisco Barrios uh, pitching and you know I'm catching and you got Downing and Essien and you got uh, oh my God Soderholm Kessinger George sure. Orton Lamar Johnson Chet Lemon I mean Bobby Bonds I mean this place was loaded Oscar Gamble Richie Zis and I'm in the big leagues with them the Southside Hitmen '77. So. You're over there in Chicago, and now you're finally won and desired and paid. And having a good time with good people. So, uh, the next thing in your future uh, is not how it gets to play games, innings, and gets at bats. Mm -hmm. And back then they had uh, what would be called a tops award. I love, I love it when you tell me this. So, the end of the season comes when you get a bunch of at bats for the, the White Sox. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, what, what award did you get? That's Topps Rookie Catcher of the Year. It's voted on by the players. Yeah. You know, they know who could play or not. That's so, right. You know, I was lucky enough to get that award. And, I always like when you always uh, give yourself a, a what to do or a compliment, you always go, I was lucky enough. I was lucky enough to hit this many home runs in high school. I was lucky enough. You know, so I, I, I'll let you keep getting away with it, but it, it means nothing to me. You're lucky enough, right? It, well, it's you're okay. lucky every day you don't get clunked in the head. Or, <laughs> that's you know, true. That's I'll take lucky. That. I mean, so... Now the White Sox um, signed you away from the Phillies, and the White Sox were getting their, their money's worth. Right. So. I would like to uh, go on a couple things. If they looked up uh, the fastest pitcher in the world, right, the fastest pitcher in the world, do you agree with me that the players would say Nolan Ryan? Yes, absolutely. Okay, so I love this story. So. I'll tell you what, you get up to the plate with him, yeah. and it's a different ball game. The ball looks completely different. When someone throws 104, the ball leaves his hand, it's got a downward angle, it flattens out, and then it looks like it gains like 20 miles an hour. It looks like you moved him up, it didn't even start until it got 45 feet away, and then it just jumps and explodes. It's, uh, you don't have time to move out of that either. If he's throwing at you, he's got you. 104 miles an hour, that just, and you hear the ball, whew, right by, you know, it just, it's pretty impressive. And any of his teammates have said that I've interviewed, right, that that's a nice, that's a real polite, nice guy off the field. Oh, great but guy. on that field, Nolan Ryan owns that mound. I oh. mean, he had a great mindset, not just a great pitcher and a great arm, but competitor where that's his mound. Oh, absolutely. He was the one, he was the best that I know of. 
That so, guy could bring some heat, though. There's a game in Chicago. I believe that you guys were losing. Obviously, this is my Naha story that I yeah. love. So, you're with the White Sox. Nolan Ryan is in Chicago facing you guys, and you're down two one or two nothing. nothing. Yeah. Yeah, and they call me in a pinch hit, or to hit. It's my turn to hit, and uh, Nolan Ryan's pitching, and two men on, and I figure two to nothing. I'm thinking, oh boy, I don't want to make it out, you know. So uh, first pitch, ball one. Second pitch, ball two. Third pitch, ball three. I think, oh man, he's gonna walk me. Thank you very much, you know. <laughs> All of a sudden, here comes one about ten mile an hour fastball. Whoo, strike one. I didn't swing. Strike two, and then Mighty Casey came to mind. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so I got up there, and uh, I figure, well, I'm going. He's coming down the middle. That's where I'm going. And sure enough, he threw the ball. Started my swing, was right on it, and my God, I crushed the ball. You know, uh, I mean, it it went left center field. I think it's like 420 or something to that part of the park. It went to the third deck, just missed the roof, and went through the uh, stairway in the third deck. I would love for to measure that thing right now. Oh my God, because I didn't do it. He supplied the power on that one, you know. Sure. But the final score was three to two. We beat him three run homer. So that's that's a highlight. Um, it's you know for a kid that that dreams of leaving Michigan oh. to win in the game for the White Sox, which is up in your area oh, in yeah. Chicago. Um, I know it's not. Tiger Stadium, but it had to feel good that oh, being in Chicago. Right. It was an incredible feeling. Um, <laughs> I'm going to take you back a little further. Sure. I get called up for the White Sox, and I hit my first home run. Okay. You know, uh, Baylor Moore. Mm -hmm. You know, I was pitching, and uh, boom, home run. When I get around second base, and you know, I'm from Detroit, you know, all of a sudden I hear boom, boom, because they have the fireworks. They have them big fireworks. Right. Man, I almost hit the ground. You know, I thought someone shooting. <laughs> I swear, I almost hit the ground. I kept running, but now my leg is shaking. I'm coming around. And uh, the next year, first at bat, yeah. first home run. No. Baylor Moore. I thought this is the only oh. guy. He throws great, too. Great pitcher, you know? Too yeah. hard. And I hit another home run. I figured this is the only guy in the big leagues I could hit home runs off of. You know? Was your first hit by a pitch the next at bat, Baylor Moore? No, because no, if no. I was Baylor Moore, yeah, that's what. Me too, yeah. yeah, you'd be you'd be biting the dirt. Yeah. No. Um, uh, I have to go to um, uh, baseball has been known for big wads of tobacco right here, you know, in the, the cheeks of ball players. And then then there's different types of there's people that wrap it in bubble gum. Mm -hmm. And there's people that spit with accuracy. Then there's people that spit for distance. When you play, right, nine months out of the year, right, you do things to keep yourself busy. Oh, good, yeah. So my first question is, when did you and tobacco <laughs> become competition, humor, friends? 72, <laughs> um, I got a tag plate, home plate, chipped one of my teeth. Right. One of the old timers said, don't want to chew. You know, he says, that'll protect your teeth and keep the dust out of your mouth. So I threw in the chew. I didn't like it at first. And then, you know, you get hooked on it. You sure. know, so I had to chew all the time. And pretty soon, about double A ball, now you start to get a little cocky. Right. And now we're spitting. You can't spit on anybody's pants or socks. you got to hit the shoes and it's free. It's okay to do that. So we'd sit there and, you know, hit the shoes and hit the shoes. In fact, I got you <laughs> when you were 13 or something. <laughs> so, uh, you know. <laughs> so we spit, and I got to where I could speak 20 feet away. I didn't get you. Well, uh, in the Houston Astrodome in 1980 or 81, they had the uh, uh, beach nut uh, spinning contest <laughs> on the mound towards home plate. Sure. And I think I speak 19 feet 6 inches the size of a half a dollar, you know, like that into the, I think, dead center. Half the farmers and the people in there just went home because they're not competitive. They're not going to give it a try. And right. I wound up getting a beautiful spittoon, nicer than the trophy I got for rookie catcher of the year from Beechnut. Beautiful thing, you know. It's from uh, I wanted a spinning cut to spit harder than anybody in the United States. Um, when when you were in the big leagues for a year or two, would you be behind the plate and a rookie would come to to bat? And uh, would you ever lift the gear? Pop him right there in the foot. No, no, I wish I would have. Though. I didn't. <laughs> I'm just asking. That's a good idea. I've got to, I've got to ask. So your sense of humor would be spitting on little innocent kids. Yes. That just wanted to, if you needed something, you know, run two tickets up or 
grab a bunch of sanitaries for the clubby to wash. And uh, I, I take it I wasn't your only victim, though. No, no, no. <laughs> Any little kid on the field was fair game, you know. And other pitchers and other catchers, you know. And manager, if he's not looking, you know. So. Oh, yeah. That's a, a, a great story. If, um, if I asked you, here's the most top, uh, the most typical question that is, is ever asked. They'll say, besides the words just being there, okay, so that, that's a common answer. But you had some games where you hit two home runs in one game. Uh, are you going to pick one of those as a pretty big thrill? Oh, God, yeah. Baltimore, Kansas City. Both of those were two home runs. Give, uh, give me both of those games where you hit a couple of dingers in each game. Uh, take me back to Baltimore. Oh, that's a, that's a story right there. Baltimore... I remember because you know how people would play the radio in the stands? Sure. And I can remember swinging a bat in on deck circle and the wind is blowing like crazy. I mean, it feels like 40, 50 miles an hour blowing and I heard a guy on the radio say, nobody's going to hit one out today. Oh, you can hear it as a player yeah. in the dugout. Oh, well, yeah, I was in on deck circle and the people in the front row had a radio. So I could Very hear cool. it right next to me. So anyway, I get up to home plate and I was like, ooh, it is windy. So I'm trying to hit the ball down hard on the ground, maybe get it through. Boom, I crush it, boom, the ball keeps going. It caught some kind of draft way back, home run. I mean, like a blast, you know, but it wasn't a blast, the wind helped it. It was actually sure. blowing this way, but it took the ball. And the second time up, boom, I hit another home run, same thing, wind took it. Is this as a member of the White Sox? This is with the White Sox, yeah. Okay. And uh, two home runs against them with a 50 mile an hour wind blowing in, <laughs> must have been circling in the stadium, and it just caught it just right two times. And, and, uh, then for your career, you do it again yep, Kansas when you're in City. Kansas City. Are you a member of the White Sox again, or, or who are you with? Oh, yeah, I'm with the White Sox. Okay. And it's uh, Mr. Busby's pitching. For, Steve Busby. Two uh, no-hitters, man. Yeah, he threw hard, threw hard, but uh, made a mistake, threw it right in my wheelhouse, and boom, home run number one into their bullpen. Okay. And then uh, second time up, I think it was him again. All right. He threw it, and boom, gone again. So those two home runs there. Feels good? Yep. Um, with with being in the uh, the big leagues, you were with different teams. You were with you were with the Phillies. You were with the White Sox. You were with the Tigers. You were with the Mariners. You were with the Indians. You were with the Braves. Yes. Which pick a team that you? It, it could be a lot. It doesn't have to be at bats and hits. You know what I mean? But it, it, sometimes it's the clubhouse morale. You know, it's the guys. And sometimes you're with the team longer than another team. You know, you're, you're with the White Sox this many years. You're with the Phillies only technically as a September call-up. Right. But what what team, if you could if you could blink your eyes like a dream of genie? I think the you, Phillies, the first few years when they had uh, Bo, Cash, Schmidt, Lisinski, Boone, all that, that was a tight-knit group. That was some kind of team right there. That was awesome. But then you go to Detroit Tigers, too. You played for your hometown Tigers. I did, and I got to stay with my parents. You'd think they weren't thrilled, so really? was I, yeah. It was awesome. And, uh, yeah, they had a real, with Morris and Parrish and, uh, oh, my God, they were loaded. You know, Trammell, it's, Whitaker. It's a great team. Yeah. The 84 team. Tigers are the Tigers that brought the World Series back to Detroit. Yeah. It's really hard because the White Sox, 277 South Side hit, man. I was with some pretty good teams. And then you had the Cleveland Indians where Rick Manning and the Toby Hara and that bunch, it would, that was a great, Andy Thornton, uh, oh. there's some good ball players there. Here's, here's what, I'll, I'll put you on the spot, but I'll, I'll lead the question to you. There's a lot of sense of humor in baseball. You, uh, Naha yourself, great sense of humor. Um, but with all those teams and all those players, if we're talking about the funniest teammate, the, fun, the best sense of humor, the funniest guy you ever were around, is there one name that comes to mind where you know what, for 162 games, month after month of the season, this, this teammate was really a funny, funny guy. Does somebody come to mind when I when I say that? Whew. Well, yeah, Tug McGraw, he was awesome. <laughs> I mean, what can you say about Tug? That's understood. Um, I, I believe that's called left-handed reliever. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then you had Joe Charbonneau. Oh, uh, yes. Super Joe. Super Joe. Yeah, what a good guy, though. Yes. And, uh, just generally a funny guy in the clubhouse? Oh, yeah, and Ralph Gar. Oh, my God. He Ralph Gar is a funny guy in the clubhouse? Oh, my God. He's hilarious. His voice goes up like a little girl worse than mine when I sing, you know? Right. And uh, he's a uh, doubleheader. Um, Rolling Stone concert just finished in Chicago. Okay. Yeah. 
Ralph Carl, great ball player, one of my all-time favorite hitters, could right. run, do a lot of things, and but he wore a helmet on in the outfield, and not because he didn't have a hat, you know, it's because sometimes he missed them, you know. Sure. And we're starting a doubleheader, I think it was against California Angels, yeah. and a Rolling Stone concert uh, was over, and they pushed over all the urinals and that were in left field. Well, they didn't clean up very well, and they threw diamond dust all over the outfield. Well, Ralph just misjudges a ball down the line a little bit, and then he winds up diving for it, and he slides through 60 feet of human waste. Waste. And, uh, oh my God, you should have heard the voice of the <laughs> screaming, and then the laughing, and the laughing wouldn't stop. The game's delayed. He has to go in and take a shower, wash off. They're cleaning off the field. You talk about funny. That could be one of the all-time funniest things ever. you got to imagine Ralph Gard diving, and he's covered from head to toe. In urine? No. Oh, uh, in number two? Yes. Really? And he smelled bad. <laughs> he smelled bad. And, you know, he, oh, my God. He went in the shower, he came back out, and he still smelled bad. That's too funny. That was something. That was a bad time for him, though. But uh, people, both teams couldn't stop laughing.